Okay, and welcome to part two of analyzing your backlinks through our tool to do a disavow if you've been affected by Penguin. <laughs> okay, so it's a couple days later. Sorry, I didn't realize the first video ended after uh, 15 minutes. It didn't continue, so I'm going to try and pick up from where I left off. So the first thing that I actually should let you know is that as you're working along here and checking off boxes, be before you leave, click on Save Selected Links, and it will save any checkboxes that you've checked. In fact, it'll if you check them off over on the Analyze Live Link Report, uh, it'll check off the same domains over here on Live Domains. Uh, anytime you check off something in one place, it checks it off anywhere. Um, you may check off a URL up in here, and it, and it may also match several patterns below. You'll see them below, and they'll be checked off, so you don't need to think about them. Um, but just the important thing is before you leave your work, you can click on that save selected link so that you, when you return to the page, you can see all your check boxes. Okay. So, you know, to just quickly wrap up uh, this, this tool here, I believe that we were in similar directory structures the last time. So just to quickly go into things like common words, again, I'm, I'm looking for stuff that doesn't appear to be natural as well, see if there's any patterns in here, and I may see things like, what's that? It almost looks like someone's name, but we don't have anyone here that works with that name. Not, not sure what this is, but it's in all of these URLs, so I may want to scope that out. There's some kind of weird pattern um, in it. don't know, but it may be all spam, and I may check it all off and be like, that's weird. All right, so we look for common words and backlink URLs, uh, 405 headers, sites with numbers in the root domain. And again, just, just because something fits a pattern doesn't mean that it's necessarily good or bad. Uh, things like K-12s, you know, are, are great links to have. If it's like uh, 40webdirectories.com, 20webdirectories.com, or just some weird number stuff in the beginning, it may deserve a closer look at. Um, but again, there's good stuff. Uh, same with things like articles. If it's like mass article submission stuff, you may you know, just want to check it all off. Again, I would look at everything before I would check things off. I, I'm not, I normally wouldn't go in and just start checking off boxes. Just quickly showing you, for example. Uh, directories, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's DMOS and Yahoo. Beyond that, I'm not sure... Um, what there really is for directories, there, there could be the occasional good one, but if someone's done mass directory submissions, you may want to get rid of it. Um, uh, links with SEOs in the root domain, they're good for me because I'm an SEO company, but for most sites, uh, you may want to look at what that is. Uh, blog links, go through the blogs, and patterns within those, forum links. Um, you know, the uh, some people... Uh, you know how do I say that? We often do find people that are spamming forums where it's like a username goes into a forum one day, signs up, and makes like five comments around the forum, and they're all like, you know, cheap yo yos and cheap Viagra and online gambling and <laughs> just other weird stuff. And it's like, and then that user never returns to that forum as well. Um, you, know, so you, you can just see what is in here. Is it real? And real uh, mentions from users and forums, or is it spam? You know, things like press release, uh, URLs containing the word, uh, like article in them, and directory and regional is more of a DMOS thing. Uh, resources. Uh, speaking of DMOS, you, you are going to run across a whole bunch of DMOS scrapers. Uh, not sure why Google decides to show everyone DMOS scrapers in their backlinks. Um, I don't think that Google is a fan of DMOS scrapers, even though they're a DMOS scraper, the Google directory is a DMOS scraper. Um, but it's funny, I, I wouldn't think that Google would count DMOS scrapers. You know, a lot of, a lot of what I'm doing when I'm looking through this is my thought is Google is looking for uh, links that people proactively went out to have to get. Like I went out and bought a thousand blog reviews or forum stuff or you know like something that someone proactively did like why are why are they making us go through and you know disavow the dema scrapers 
um, when Google knows enough to know it's a DMOS scraper. Like, why are you showing me this? Why, are, why aren't you showing me stuff that maybe you thought I proactively did? But in any case, so DMOS scrapers, you know, uh, disavow them or not. You know, some people say, I want to disavow all stuff like that. And, um, like, all right, you know, that's fine. And some people are like, well, I don't feel that Google is going to be penalizing us for things like DMOS scrapers because it's not something that we proactively went out and did. So, um, all right, press releases, dates and URLs, links that don't match patterns. So part of what we're doing is, you know, in this particular report, we're analyzing 5,336 of the live domains, and all those domains are on the pattern page, and they fit all at least one pattern. Sometimes domains fit into multiple patterns, but just to make sure that every domain is being looked at on this page, um, we have a pattern for URLs that didn't match any pattern. <laughs> so um, we can go through here and look at what these are just to make sure that everything is reviewed. Now on the bottom, there's two areas that are a little bit different. Uh, the first one is the most common anchor text, and the second one is the most linked to pages. So these are actually the areas that I go into first. When I do a analysis, I usually jump right into the most common anchor text. And what I'm looking at is, are all the top phrases money phrases um, and things that don't appear to be natural? Like how come most people are linking to your site with cheap blue widgets and you know the name of your company is like bobstore.com and so like, just, you know, and I'm gonna go right into here first and be like, all right, what is the stuff that you may have been proactively trying to do to increase your rankings and let's let's jump right into this stuff it's where I usually start my analysis and I'll start to check off uh, items that I feel are, are not natural and could fit patterns and get you in trouble with Google and then after I go through uh, the phrases I'm then going to go down to the most linked to pages uh, this is actually pretty cool because um, here here these are sites that have been 301'd in um, you know, but we also show like with and without the backslash and sometimes you can find patterns and like uh, a whole bunch of people linked to this version, you know, and that's all unnatural stuff. You know, some, sometimes you get lucky and find other weird versions that are a bunch of spam uh, when you go and look at the backlinks. So again, I'm going to look through all the pages that have backlinks. Do these look natural? And then... I may also go back to the live domain. Um, as, I, as I find patterns within patterns, or if there's ever a time where I'm going through here, I'm like, oh, you know, here's something that seems to be common between things. I often go to the search box on the live domain page. And, um, you know, I'll type in things like maybe I find like a B class that seems common or something. You know, I might start to type those in or, you know, just some other weird item that I may find in patterns. I'll run a search on the live page to pick those up and it'll give me back all of those results. And when I am all done, you know, again, I click on the save selected links. I, I click on this just occasionally. Again, if you click it on this tab, it's the same as clicking on this tab or this tab or this tab. It just saves your work across the board. Um, then what I'll do is I'll click on the export for disavow. When I'm all when I'm all ready, and the export for disavow, if you clicked off the root domain, it will give you domain colon uh, whatever this URL is dot com. Um, and if I were to click off page, it will give me the uh, page and the, the whole URL. Instead of domain colon, it's HTTP colon slash slash the whole URL. Um, if I click on URL, if I, and, um, you also want to click on any one of the sub ones below it as well. So you may want to be like, all right, I want both these on as the URLs. 98% of the time, you're probably going to want to use blocking things by the root domain as opposed to the URL. Um, there are occasionally where, let's say, someone spammed and say like an ADU or something, and be like, all right, I want to block that page, but you know, if, if ever this URL, this EDU were to link to you in the future, I certainly would want you know that link. Um, okay, so you know, when I'm all done like analyzing the live links, I often go through the uh, or analyzing the live link report, then I may go over to the live link, do any other searches, do some checks over there. And then I'm ready for my export for disavow. 
And when I click on that, we talked about that, I'll get a text document and that's what I can upload. Now, the other area is the dead domains. You know, the question is, what do you, what do, you do with these? Um, almost all of these, in theory, shouldn't have any effect on your rankings. Things like the possible host error. You know, if 718 of the domains are 404 error or other errors, like, um, you know, that, that, uh, that shouldn't have any effect on your rankings. Now, some of those uh, links that are in here may be just temporarily down. You know, it may have been a host error when we ran it. It may not be now. So, you know, understand that everything in the dead domain area as well, take with a, a bit of a grain of salt. You know, there could be some bugs in here. Um, also, the other thing to think about is with all these dead domains is there could be another site that 301's into your site um, and you might be getting in a whole bunch of backlinks to those and they may show up as dead domains. So first thing, make sure that all the domains that are 301 into your site, uh, you put them in at the beginning of the report as these are other sites that are 301-ing in there to make sure that you're looking at those. Um, we do have another private tool that I'll release at some point that goes through all of your dead links and looks for common common links on all those pages for sites that could be 301-ing into your site. So another neat little thing. But things like the host errors, that shouldn't have any bearing on your rankings. Uh, the 302 redirects doesn't pass uh, any uh, page rank or value. Uh, no followed links don't pass any page rank or value. Um, not found links. Um, these were links where when we went to the page, we couldn't find your link there. Um, again, double check the stuff, but you know, if your link is not on all these domains, then that stuff shouldn't count. And the no response links, these pages didn't load for us. So uh, they may load for you now. But in theory, if if this were 100% correct, uh, except for the th 301s do pass um, link power, uh, this particular one I'll, I'll probably have removed from this tool or from this area, but we have this as off. Uh, uh, 301 redirects that go to other sites. Um, but I guess I would scope out this one, but things like the host errors and 302s and the no followed and the not found and the no responses, there's a the question of what do you do with those? Because in theory, that that shouldn't be anything that got you in trouble with Penguin. And if, in theory, when Google returns to those pages, um, it, it should not count it. So some people do go through the entire um, uh, request to go through the entire uh, dead domains and check off boxes in there as well that they want to include in the disavow. Um, uh, all different SEOs have different thoughts on, you know, why is even Google showing the not found links in there and why are they showing 302s? It, it's certainly not a complete picture of your backlinks. Like first thing to understand is people are always like, is this all of my backlinks? And like, no, this is what Google's showing. I don't know why they show uh, so much junk and with your backlinks and, as well. They're not showing others. Uh, we have another tool where we can put in uh, your spreadsheet from what everything you know about and then put in the Google spreadsheet and it can you know, combine them. But it also will tell you here's stuff that you know about that Google doesn't know about and here's stuff that Google knows about but you never knew about. Um, and here's a complete list if you wanted to analyze everything. And that's for another tool that will be coming out uh, in a week or two here for everyone uh, to the public. So I hope you have enjoyed this. If you if you do want someone to review your um, review your backlinks, um, you know it, it usually it, it takes hours. For for me, it usually takes anywhere from. I've been as lucky as like one to six hours. It really depends on how many backlinks you have and how bad things are. And, um, you know, how do I say it's, it's, it's still a process even for me. And I've been doing this for more than 14 years as far as building backlinks and understanding backlinks and being able to pick up on things uh, a lot quicker than most would because uh, I'm familiar and I've done so many of the disavows as well. But if you would like help in doing your disavow, of course, we'd be happy to help you out. Um, I do about three disavows a week. 
um, and they're five thousand um, dollars. You do get lots of lots of other things with it, but in the end, you were getting uh, a link to the report. You see every box that I checked off and every box that I didn't check off, so you get to see all the work that it was done. We do have a couple of pre-filter tools as well that uh, we show, so we give you a couple of other pre-reports that show the analysis that uh, we did. Um, and then in the end, you get this report as well as the export with disavow. Um, we may also, for the next few people, include a recording like this of what I'm doing here so that you actually can see me go through and, how do I say, you'll see me upload all the pre-filtered stuff and you'll see me go through and analyze what, what, what is in there and do any unchecks or additional checks as well. So. Um, if you'd like to, feel free to contact us and this tool, what, what you're seeing here, I imagine will continue to evolve and uh, grow and be a little bit different. We're going to be releasing some other tools, some pre-filters to the public uh, like over a period of a few months here. So hope you enjoy. Have a great day. I'm feeling lucky today. I hope you are too.